This presentation starts in 1857 when Francis DeLong and Joseph Sweetser purchased Rancho Novato. It was 8,871 acres. By 1887, the ranch was developed into orchards. It consisted of 250 acres with 40,000 trees, including apples, apricots, and pears. The apple production was considered one of the largest in the world. In addition to the orchards, their milch cows eventually numbered 1,300. In April of 1879, DeLong sold Sweetser 562 acres of Rancho Novato from Wilson Avenue to Redwood Boulevard for $5. This picture of the DeLong Sweetser property was taken around the time of the previous slide was made. It is the home depicted in the drawing. The picture below is of the mansion that Sweetser lived in at the end of Elm Street after divesting his interest in Rancho Novato. The artist's rendering of Novato around 1876 looks toward the east. As a reference point, we indicate where the current Vintage Oak Shopping Center is located. Novato Township began as a stagecoach stop and was located halfway between San Rafael and Petaluma. Entrepreneurs took advantage of this location and bought portions of the Rancho de San Jose land grant to create a general store and saloons located on what is now South Nevada Boulevard near Nevada Creek. The first Catholic church, Our Lady of Loretta, was established in 1890. A house that Ramon Pacheco owned in the 1850s later became the postmaster house in which you are now standing. As you can see on the map, a deep water channel was dredged on the wetlands. The channel was two miles long and 100 feet wide. In the early days, the Novato Creeks were navigable. Barge transportation played a very important role in commerce of Novato. Ranch owners Wright and Owens had the canal dredged and built a mill on their property. This photo was taken in 1923. It was located near where Ganas Field is located today. As seen in this slide, the background at hills are Mount Burdell. Sloops and barges transported produce to sell to San Francisco, returning with supplies. When the Northwestern Pacific Railroad came to Novato in 1879, it caused a decline in the transportation business. However, this means of transport survived into the 1900s. The railroad came in 1879 and the center of town shifted to the area close to the train depot. The picture shows how the, by 1914 the town was developing. The railroad served as the main transportation between Novato and San Francisco. It brought tourists escaping the city and goods for the residents. The train returned to the city with agricultural products for sale. The picture below is what the same area looks like today. In August 1903, J.P. Lustenau purchased the freight building of the old train depot and moved it to the back lot of his hall, called the club, where it would be used as a carriage house and stable. Today, the Novato Druids own the hall, and the old depot is still on the back lot. The old depot was dedicated on April 22, 1989, and has been designated Novato's first railroad station by the Novato Historical Society, the Novato Grove of Druids No. 113, and the Grand Parlor Native Sons of the Golden West. Its address is 927 Rikert Street. With transportation methods shifting from barge to rail, Novato civic life also shifted. One of the first businesses created near the railroad station was the Novato Hotel. Built in 1880, it became the leading hotel in Newtown, Novato. In 1899, the hotel was purchased by retired schooner captain Leon Herrenbaron. The family operated the hotel, saloon, restaurant, and living, livery stable. In 1908, a Swiss immigrant, Abraham Yelmarini, took advantage of a small triangle of land adjacent to the depot to build the Flatiron Building as a hotel and saloon. The building blocked the view of arriving trains passengers to other businesses along Grand Avenue and therefore became the first establishment they visited. 
Traveling down Grand Avenue to the next block, 800 Grand Avenue, was Stephen Porcella's blacksmith shop built in 1893. This helped complete the town transition from South Nevada Boulevard to Grand Avenue. The postmaster's house was built circa 1850 on South Nevada Boulevard near Yukon Way. One of the earliest occupants was Henry Jones, who started Nevada's Postal Service in 1856. In 1972, then-owner Fabian Bobo offered the house to the city of Nevada if they would move it. The city accepted the offer, and the old house was moved to its present location and today houses the Nevada History Museum and Archives. On the corner of Redwood Highway and Grand Avenue, Louis Nave opened his garage around 1923. He sold new cars and repaired the ailing ones. In the 1950s, a second story was added that combined four apartments. Various businesses have occupied the ground floor. In 1913, James Black Burdell financed Nevada's first bank and became its first president. The building was constructed by Frank Silva, who owned the property. The adjoining building to the west served as Nevada's post office until 1951. Today, the old bank building and the adjoining properties are retail sites and are still owned by the Silva family. This building at 815 and 817 Grand Avenue was built in 1910 to expand the hardware business that Charles Carlyle started in the Flatiron Building. It was known for the range of items considered hard to find. Following his death in 1961, the site has been home to many businesses. Nevada's children exit from the Nevada Theater after a special Christmas movie and are on their way to visit Santa at the Nevada Firehouse. Today, Copperfield's Books occupies the corner where Nevada Grammar School once stood. In the bottom photo, Sheila Kina Brossier crosses the same intersection remembering being one of those children eager to see Santa. Looking west on Grand Avenue from the intersection with Redwood Boulevard, which was then Highway 101, businesses were beginning to replace the scattered homes and dairies. By 1947, Gordon Anderson moved his Chevrolet Motor Company there, and Peeney Hardware and a drugstore opened across the highway. Today, Redwood Credit Union replaces Anderson Motor Company, and Peeney Hardware has moved to a different location. This was the second Catholic church built by Our Lady of Loretta Parish, which was constructed and dedicated in 1937 after fire destroyed the previous church on South Nevada Boulevard. As the population of Nevada increased in the late 1950s and 1960s, the parish needed to expand and build a larger church at its present location on Nevada Boulevard and Grand Avenue. The Grand Avenue property was sold to the Pickey family in 1963. Our Lady of Loretta was officially declared a Catholic parish in 1892. The Catholic Church was built on South Nevada Boulevard. The second Catholic Church was built on Grand Avenue in 1937. The third church was constructed at its present location on Nevada Boulevard at Grand Avenue in 1963. Hamilton Air Force Base was a large part of the Nevada economy. The base opened as Hamilton Army Airfield in 1935 and was instrumental in West Coast air defense. Behind the color guard, the main gate can be seen. Hamilton Air Force Base was decommissioned in 1976 and is now a planned mixed-use community. A new main gate was built by the developers for Hamilton Field. It was built in the Spanish style to blend it with the historic architecture of the base. Novato Airport, as it was originally called, was established by Paul Benford and Jack Lewis in 1946. It consisted of a runway and a small terminal. In 1965, Marin County purchased 40 acres and established Marin County Airport at Ganas Field. The Bazzini Ranch, as it appeared in 1947, was west of Highway 101, between Novato Creek and Highway 37. In 1958, Richard Hanna purchased the 1,000 acres of mostly tidal land and improved the drainage. In 1992, the Vintage Oaks Shopping Center opened 
on the part of the Hanno Ranch property and the remainder is now open space. After the gold rush of 1849, San Francisco was growing rapidly and needed to pave its muddy streets. Mount Burdell's rock formation contained the pillow basalt from which the pavers were carved. Between 1887 and 1894, two large quarries were operating on Mount Burdell as well as several smaller ones. Great quantities of street paving blocks were quarried there, then transported by horse-drawn wagons down the mountain and eventually shipped by schooner and barges to San Francisco. The quarry would lay dormant after 1894 and was reopened in 1954 by the Marin Gravel Company. In 1856, it was purchased by Richard Rush and Martin Wunderlich and became Marin Rock and Asphalt. It closed in 1965. The Buck Institute opened on Mount Burdell in 1999, designed by I.M. Pei, its exteriors covered by travertine. Located on a former quarry site, the facility researches age, aging and age-related diseases. It was the first independent research facility in the United States to focus on this subject. The Presbyterian Church was built in 1896. When Nevada was incorporated in 1960, city officials purchased the church. The old white church was painted dark red with white trim and in 1963 began to be used as the city hall. During the decades that followed, city staff occupied multiple buildings at the Civic Center campus on Sherman Avenue. In 2005, these buildings were determined to be structurally unsound. The city leased offices on Roland Boulevard from 2005 to 2013. Construction started in August of 2012 on a new administrative building in the Civic Center campus. On May 3, 2014, the city held a dedication for the new building in the Civic Green area.